Thanks very much. My, my presentation is going to be a little bit different um, because we are a research organization. I'd like to, to give a few uh, recent examples from the uh, ICDRB of how policy relevant research can uh, influence rational deployment uh, of uh, OCVs. And, uh, uh, and, and I hope that it will convince you and, um, and the Wellcome Trust uh, to continue supporting this very important uh, dimension of the Ending Cholera uh, Initiative. The first example I'd like to cite <clears throat> was a uh, individually randomized placebo-controlled trial of a single dose of Shankol uh, administered uh, to 205,000 non-pregnant uh, persons age one year and over in 2014. You're probably aware of these data, which showed that uh, at six months uh, there was appreciable uh, protection of, uh, of, of folks five years and over and, and nil protection uh, of kids. Uh, and in fact, this protection of the five year and over group uh, persisted for two years, uh, as did the, the nil protection of uh, children, which we ascribe to the likely lack of pre existing immunity. Uh, of children in this setting. Little did we know when we undertook this research that it would have uh, tremendous implications for the deployment of uh, Sean Call to the Rohingya uh, exiles in Cox's Bazaar, uh, shown here in August of 2017, uh, when they arrived in torrential rains without uh, access to clean water uh, without access to sanitation, and in Cox's Bazaar, which is one of the uh, highest cholera areas uh, of Bangladesh. Something needed to be done fast. The Bangladesh government acted very quickly, uh, requested OCV from the global stockpile, but unfortunately, there only 900,000 doses were available because of competing demands uh, to vaccinate 700,000 people. Well, I think you can do the math. That doesn't work out to two doses uh, per person. But we reason that if the Rohingyas were coming from an adjacent area uh, to Bangladesh in Myanmar, they likely uh, were uh, exposed to cholera and had natural immunity and resembled Bangladeshis. We didn't know that. Uh, there was absolutely no surveillance data available uh, for the Rohingyas, but, we, uh, but that was uh, the gamble, and as you heard, uh, the gamble paid off. And interestingly, um, uh, Dr. Kadri at the ICRB had the foresight um, to assess serum vibricidal antibodies to Sean Call in recent uh, Rohingya uh, arrivals, showing in ba baseline titers the expected uh, age related increases of titers that would reflect residents in an area with natural infection and, and uh, displaying uh, responses to vaccine that were absolutely identical to the responses in the Bangladeshi uh, population. This RCT also provided the opportunity to uh, address the safety of Sean Call during pregnancy. Uh, there have been several studies of safety during pregnancy, but they've all been observational. Many have been retrospective. This trial offered us the opportunity to do prospective surveillance um, on women found after dosing to have been pregnant at the time of dosing. This is cohort one at the top, as well as women uh, who uh, uh, became pregnant after uh, dosing, cohort number two, and allowed us to assess this in a randomized, double-blinded fashion, I think, for the first time, and shows very clearly that there was no, there was no hint of uh, uh, adverse effects uh, on pregnancy uh, in this population. The second study I'd like to uh, cite um, is a Gavi-supported uh, study uh, uh, on the delivery of Sean Call to children 1 to 14 years of age in an urban Dhaka slum. You're probably aware that there have been uh, analyses of different age-targeting strategies uh, for Sean Call, with the 1 to 14-year-old strategy uh, being potentially more cost-effective but of uncertain uh, uh, effectiveness in terms of reducing the total burden uh, in the uh, general population. 
So the purpose of this study, um, which was simply a demonstration project, was to estimate the direct and hurt effects of a strategy of delivering a shan call to children 1 to 14 years of age in urban Dhaka via mass immunization, and specifically to evaluate whether this vaccination strategy conferred vaccine herd protection to persons younger or older than the target age range, uh, and whether this strategy uh, yielded acceptable uh, overall levels of protection. This was done uh, in Mirpur, Dhaka, in an area with about 390,000 persons, uh, a, ver a very mobile population. About half uh, moved into the area during the two years of surveillance. Uh, you can see that um, a mass vaccination uh, uh, resulted in 75,000 first doses for 70% coverage of the uh, childhood population, but only 19% po population of the general population. And then a, two, uh, a, a complete uh, regimen uh, uh, covered about 60% of the target population and 17% of the general population. This population was followed for two years thereafter with passive surveillance for cholera, during which 189 cholera cases were detected. Um, the rates in the 1 to 14-year-olds were uh, 4 per 10,000 in non-vaccinees, 2 uh, per uh, 10,000 in vaccinees, rather low rates uh, in our experience for this area. Um, we conducted um, uh, analyses um, uh, using models that enabled uh, assessment both of direct and vaccine herd protection uh, and found that direct protection was about 50% lower in 1 to 4-year-olds than in 5 to 14-year-olds and that indirect protection of kids or infants too young to have been dosed or uh, older children and adults who were too old to have been dosed did exist. It was about 34% but was not terribly high, such that uh, the overall level of vaccine protection was only about 25%. So th I think this provides very clear guidance that if your goal is to really control cholera in a population, you shouldn't uh, target only uh, uh, children. Finally, uh, uh, after uh, this, uh, this demonstration project, we undertook a, um, uh, a second demonstration project to evaluate a very practical logistical question about mass immunization programs with a two-dose uh, vaccine. Namely, can you uh, get away with simply giving the second dose uh, to first-dose recipients to self-administer uh, at home? If so, obviously, this would greatly simplify the logistics. Um, we targeted a population of 56,000 people. 74% uh, received the first dose through mass immunization by the routine public health system uh, in June of 2017. At the time of giving the first dose, we gave each recipient a Ziploc bag with the second dose in, in, enclosed, um, uh, a immunization card, uh, and instructions on how to store the vaccine uh, at home and instructions for self-administration uh, of the second dose two weeks later. Uh, we then uh, checked all of these uh, households and recipients um, a, little, a little more than two weeks later, uh, both with histories and with examination of the vials as to whether they were empty or not. Uh, both assessments uh, came up with the conclusion uh, that 90, around 95% did take the second dose. So this may be uh, a, a, an approach that can be considered uh, in the future. Thanks.